All right, Dr. Shepard, Dave Gottfeld here taking a look at you on your trainer, uh, trainer bike. Very interesting. I basically just wanted to watch you kind of squinting uh, the first time in real time, looking which way you like to go, which way you don't like to go. It's interesting. I really like the single leg approach because I can see already how much motion you're getting. Your left hip uh, I'm seeing is your whole body, you get a heck of a lot more motion. You're, you kind of rattle around when you go through that left hip compared to the right hip. Um, so I, I stopped it and I kind of wanted to replay it, see how it is at real time, seeing which way you sway. And then when you go ahead and bring, let's see here, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And I'm just looking for when you do those revolutions, what happens to the entire chain? And I notice there's a lot more movement through your hands, elbows, shoulders, T-spine when you rotate that left side compared to the right side. Uh, when you do both at the same time, we're just getting that, you know, the curvature of the pelvis is moving uh, together as one unit. Um, it's just tilt, you know, you're just getting that, uh, that posterior tilt to the pelvis. Um, it's not we're going to replicate what you're actually seeing on the bike, but um, it definitely uh, was very interesting when I saw the, uh, when you went one leg, single leg. Uh, comparing the two. I'm going to drop a grid right on there. The great thing is you centered the camera really nicely. I put a grid right on you and I'm just looking for quadrants. I'm looking for just, it, you know, I kind of look at the body as a whole and then I kind of break it into little segments. Seeing what's going on. You can put little, uh, you know, markers on the PSIS uh, on the tops of the iliac crest to see what happens and kind of look for movement, movement changes, asymmetries. I'm guessing we have a very restricted uh, left hip um, and that would be my, my first big rock I would go after. And the beauty of, of uh, all of us looking at this video is we're all going to see different things. This is just my vantage point and my experience. Uh, and the great thing is if we all kick it around, we can all learn from each other on ways of assessing. Let's take a look at a side profile now. I'm just curious to see what's going on. Looking at degree, you can look at uh, how much knee flexion on each side. When you do it individually, I really like that as an assessment tool. On a standard bike, you'd unclip them obviously and, and watch them pedal. And I think you get a really nice feel of how much motion, how much compensation they're getting on each side. Um, that, that I think that's a very uh, effective way of uh, assessing. Just watching it real time, just looking for differences. Maybe there's a different in knee height. Uh, we can drop the postural grid on them. We could use the bullseye. I think I'll pull the bullseye up in a second here. Put a marker, uh, you could use the head of the femur as a mark, you could use the knee, it, it really doesn't matter. Just find a point that, that's sort of fixed. And I, I usually you know, move around the axis. Uh, so probably that, the, the femur would be effective as a, uh, an area. Just looking for knee height. Is there a difference between the two knees? How much hip extension? And that's, bike fitters will, will tell you what they want and, and that's not my area to say how long the crank length should be. Um, I can simply just look at some of the compensations through the chain based on how you're positioned. Obviously, I'm looking at your cervical spine right now and your thoracic spine. I'm guessing that you really uh, have some restriction in that thoracic spine, get an excessive motion in that cervical spine um, with that forward head posture. And here I'm just going frame by frame, just kind of just seeing how much extension you can get in your hip. Obviously, we're not even getting to neutral, um, you know, and, and so if you have a jammed up anterior hip capsule, I would not be surprised from a, but that's pretty typical with um, cyclists being in this forward uh, compact position. And I, the big thing is, is when you do those left revolutions, you'll see how much the whole body moves. Wait till we do the front profile, you'll really see the difference of how much drift and, and movement you get uh, when you rotate through that left hip compared to the right. But I think this is a really uh, creative way of evaluating on the bike, doing a single leg um, range of motion. I, I think that's, that's phenomenal. I really like that. Okay, so now we've got a front, really nice job on that front profile. You're dead on center, which is really nice. Um, now you can drop, you know, watch range of motion. 
and you're just going to see how much movement the body has left side right side so when you rotate around on the right we're not seeing nearly as much whole body movement the head's not drifting as much shoulders aren't drifting as much but when you rotate that left side I'm really seeing a whole lot of wiggle in your body compared to the right again that's information I would take you off the bike obviously and assess give you exercises uh, movement patterns to help address that that issue in that left hip and then I put you back on the bike as my litmus test and see are you more efficient uh, are you leaking energy anywhere or are you uh, being more efficient in your strokes drop a postural grade here drop it right on the headset of the bike nice center point I'm probably gonna put it right on the nose if you're centered really well like you are uh, it's really effective and just watch how much drift we get there's the right side and see how much more you move on the left side and that's what I'm just looking for is just any kind of energy leakage or inefficiency uh, that's gonna create excessive wear somewhere else you know and if you're clipped in your bike remember you're you could be getting you know lower leg discomfort you could be getting hip discomfort low back discomfort shoulder neck discomfort wrist and elbow discomfort and it just it's it's information so love to hear one else's insight but this is just some some areas that I'm seeing uh, you know but I, I appreciate you sending the clips this is uh, very interesting thank you so much